So here we've got um, Amparo Domingo, WDI Country Contact for Spain. She's also in the coordination group of Confluencia. Um, she is going to speak on the topic, women are about to be erased in Spain. Gender identity ideology permeates all our legislation. So welcome and thank you so much for speaking, Amparo, and over to you. I will start with a general a summary of the situation of Spain politics and the attack of women's rights, uh, which briefly includes different pieces of information that were already said in previous webinars, but of course uh, they will be complemented uh, with new information that happened since the last time we came uh, as a panelist to uh, FQT. And after that, I will focus on the most important part of my report, which is the bill commonly referred to everyone here as the trans law that is currently at our Senate, which pretends to create a new right in our legal system so that anyone from 14 years old on could freely change the legal sex at the registry. No conditions or requirements whatsoever at any point. Um, just a little clarification that gender is not a legal category at all in Spain. It doesn't exist from the legal point of view. Personal documents, including birth certificates, passport, ID, ID driver's license, anything, um, they reflect the information of the card holder, of the document holder. So gender does not exist in Spanish law. As I said, women are about to be erased in Spain because... Uh, it's uh, very unlikely that uh, the bill uh, is stopped. Um, we, th we think uh, it'll pass. So the general summary about um, the politics in, in Spain, we have a progressive government, which is a coalition of two parties, the Socialist Party and the new party called Podemos, which is uh, in Spanish, it means we can which is a clear influence from the Obama slogan, which is a very, very woke. In the negotiations for the distribution of cabinet responsibilities, they demanded the Equalities Ministry and got it. And from that moment on, three years ago, they have been pushing gender ideology very aggressively in every piece of legislation they have created, while also influencing many other initiatives from other ministries. I would like to show you our incumbent uh, Ministry for Equality, the, the woman that is standing in between two trans-identified males who are very, very uh, prominent in their activism. And uh, as I put here in, um, in the slide, there is no equivalent to this picture, to this image uh, with the minister, uh, of the minister with any other, uh, with any woman belonging to the Spanish feminist movement. She is clearly, clearly at the service of males and it shows in every action that she takes at, at the ministry. I'm going to show you the uh, legislation that has uh, the concept, the artificial concept of gender identity or maybe sexual identity. The wording sometimes changes. Um, in Spanish laws um, in recent recent years. So already approved, we have um, the organic law on education, it was amended and they um, take advantage of, of this, took advantage of this uh, amendment in order to introduce gender identity. There's this, this new law, uh, organic law on the comprehensive protection of children and adolescents against violence and gender identities here as well. There's this uh, very um, polemic uh, new organic law on the comprehensive guarantee of sexual freedom, uh, which has a nickname. Um, later on, I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, the nick nickname is only yes means yes, because it's about consent, so they said. And uh, in uh, the health department, they have been pushing policies for women without partners, lesbian, bisexuals, and also trans persons with reproductive capacity. Also the sport law, we have a new sport law in Spain that was approved very, very recently by our, um, our, our parliament. And it has also gender identity there um, in, in relation to um, uh, avoiding uh, discrimination. So um, we're going to see how that uh, develops. 
also in process uh, and they want uh, this um, this bill to be approved next to the to the trans bill the this uh, this one this uh, organic law on sexual and reproductive health and the voluntary interruption of pregnancy we call it the abortion law and there is also um, um, gender identity ideology in that in that bill also, they announced the, re the reform of the, um, the, there was a public consultation on um, the organic law on comprehensive protection measures against gender violence, and they wanted they wanted to to implement uh, gender identity here as well. So, the law that I mentioned, the only yes means yes, uh, was uh, very polemic from the beginning. It is one of the highlights in the negative sense of this woke ministry, because uh, it has been, as I said, infamous for having reduced the minimum penalties for rape. Um, and according to a principle in Spanish law that says that prisoners have the right to benefit from positive changes in the legislation, around 200 convictions have been re-examined so far. And so the sen those sentences have been reduced, resulting even in rapists being released from Spanish prisons since the approval of this law some months ago. During the draft and bill stages of the law, the ministry had been warned about this very highly likely outcome because it was in the wording of the, of the bill. But uh, they very adamantly denied that it would happen. And here we have um, this... Um, it's a satiric tweet account it has uh, turned uh, our um, Spanish minister into a meme because she had uh, she had been uh, saying at uh, the Congress there won't be not there won't be one reduction of um, of penalties of convictions and then they are not going to be known this that is not going to happen she was blaming her political opponents she was blaming everyone. Uh, I, they, they, she says uh, they were attacked uh, by, by that was just pure propaganda. But of course, after the approval of the of the bill, everyone was proved right. And by the time they um, did this this tweet um, two weeks ago, so there had been 140 uh, reductions. And last uh, Monday, this uh, new uh, piece uh, at a conservative newspaper. The, the counting were uh, getting close to 200. So this, uh, um, she has become, a, 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 like I said, a, a meme. There were calls for her removal from government, from the cabinet, because this has been a scandal in Spain, but there haven't been any political consequences for anyone involved whatsoever. She's um, there and uh, no changes have been introduced uh, in the ministry. As I said, there were, they also wanted to. They also wanted to reform the abortion law, and uh, this is very woman-oriented. This bill is very woman-oriented. The language, so that was very suspicious. So we looked over, and as you see here, I have highlighted that they say they mentioned trans people who are able to gestate. The excuse for the reform was cancelling a form of cha change introduced by the Conservatives some years ago that banned abortions for minors uh, over 16 years old, but minors without parental consent. So the proposed changes and the official ex excuse were that young women will have agency to decide whether to go ahead with a pregnancy or not, even if they were not uh, of legal age. But uh, as I said, the main um, uh, reason we believe the main reason for the change is to introduce uh, this uh, gender the language in into our abortion law as the Argentinians did. It was very telling that during the um, reports and meetings and all the studies that they were being made bef uh, before launching the draft, um, our minister was uh, in in very close connection with the Argentinian Ministry uh, of Equality. Uh, as I said, um, they were uh, uh, coping the template for that. The bill, this uh, abortion law um, bill, uh, was deemed urgent already at the draft stage. So the public consultation on it lasted only eight days. We had eight days only to supply allegations. 
The legal minimum period is 15 days, but for the urgency, they could they could cut that in, in half. So the Spanish law, this is interesting, determines that in order to deem a draft bill urgent, compelling and unforeseeable reasons have to have happened. Those reasons have to be spelled out in the report that accompanies the draft bill. Compelling and unforeseeable reasons uh, had to be uh, spelled out, but we couldn't find them anywhere at all. We were looking for, for those reasons. Uh, so because of that absence, when we uh, submitted our allegations, we complained about the lack of transparency and mentioned that there were no reasons given. So later on, when the draft became a bill to be sent to a Congress, uh, you know, this is a Spanish law, they have to create a new report. And this at the right side of the slide is a snapshot from the report. And this is our submission. And they say here that we were complaining about um, the, there was no justification for this urgency. And they said here, you see, that it is taken into consideration and it is conveniently justified. So they said that we were right and that they would correct this, um, this fault on their side. So um, a national newspaper noticed this um, mention and contacted us writing about it in an article on the abortion reform, which is uh, what you have here. This is a snapshot from the newspaper ABC, which is conservative, as you might have guessed already. Uh, that said that's the feminist organization, Women's Declaration, questions the legality of the process. There's a surprise because, of course, they said here that they were about to justify it, but they didn't. The irony is that the government quoted CEDO, which was uh, ratified by Spain 40, 40 years ago, 40. So that means it is not urgent. It is not unforeseeable. Um, they quoted CEDO and its Article 16 as the reason for the urgency which absolutely contradicts the um, next bill that I'm talking uh, that I'm about to talk which is the so-called trans law because uh, that law absolutely contradicts CEDA. so they choose what article of CEDA to follow or not depending on whether it suits their their agenda so now on the trans law, which is the most important uh, threat we have currently here in Spain, as Marina very kindly pointed out in her intervention. And uh, um, there's uh, on the way, um, you know, this has been a very, very rocky journey for, for it because at the beginning there were two pieces of, of legislation. They wanted to have two different uh, laws, but then they merged them in one document. Uh, there was an apparent blockage by the then Vice Prime Minister Carmen Calvo, which in the end caused her removal from the cabinet by the Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez. So, um, as I said, when those two pieces of legislation were merged, they, um, in June 2021, the draft bill was approved by the cabinet, coinciding with Pride, so it was a PR stunt. The bill contains all three woke axes that in other jurisdictions appear in different proposals, but we have all of that in just one bill, so it's all or nothing here in Spain. We have uh, self-ID, as you say, Article 38 and following, uh, says that self-ID for every Spaniard over 14 years old. No questions asked, no requisite whatsoever. 14 to 16, uh, they, they must be assisted by their legal guardians, but in case of any discrepancy, the, the minor will have their way, so it's self-ID from 14 years old. From 16 years old, anyone on their own, no, um, no questions asked. The proposal doesn't exclude anyone, not even people with declared mental illnesses like schizophrenia or criminal history, nothing, nothing at all. Then there's the interdiction by law of any non-affirmative approach to perceived identities. Then Article 17 has a specific banning on so-called conversion therapists, which is uh, a de facto criminalization of psychologists, uh, as we know. 
But also there's a consideration that non-affirming parents are dangerous for the well-being of the children, and therefore they could be they could lose uh, the cost custody of their child of the children. That, uh, by the way, is already said as a principle in one of the laws that I mentioned that had been approved um, earlier on in this uh, by this government. So pa parents are really uh, at, um, in a very difficult position here in, in, in Spain. The third axis is criminalization of dissent with fines up to 150,000 euros for the new crime of LGTBI phobia. The psychologists are specially targeted because they are the ones that could face the top fines. The top tier, the most aggravated cases, are um, professionals, health, uh, mental health professionals that were found to engage in conversion therapy. Um, I think I already explained in some other occasions that this bill doesn't modify our criminal code which means that so far people can be sent to jail. But uh, um, on the other side, this is very dangerous because even if no crime were commit committed, there could be a fine anyway. So that's a very, very um, tricky situation to have. Prominent feminist Lydia Falcon has said that this system of economic punishment is very reminiscent of Francoist tactics. And we have had a surprise because one of the minor changes to the bill during the parliamentary procedure has been the introduction of a new paragraph that says, I have it translated for you here, that the Ministry of Health will ensure the sufficient supply of medicines used in hormonal treatments for trans persons and will supervise their supply in order to avoid recurrent episodes of stockouts. So much for the pathologization, as they say. So this is um, like the core of the bill, but there have been, um, as I hinted at the beginning, multiple irregularities in the proceedings, starting by the reports. Um, the mandatory public consultation, as I mentioned, was uh, last year, they, um, um, program that to happen in August, which is an unworking month. Everyone is on holiday, no one pays attention. And that is uh, usually being made when mm, the politicians do not, do not want the population to notice something is happening. They wait until August to uh, to um, put that into, into force. So there was this uh, also odd thing in the bill at that stage that it didn't have um, an articles with definitions. So we didn't have any definition of what was that trans people that uh, the bill was protecting. And, uh, um, you know, the bill had to be informed by a series of public bodies, among the most important, the General Council of the Judiciary which is uh, a paragraph of, of that report I'm, I'm bringing you here. In the report, they said that the proposal infringed the, people, the principle of equality for, because women were clearly being discriminated in favor of trans-identified males. They were specifically mentioning sports as an example. And uh, I have translated for you the... Um, the, this uh, this paragraph this says that it includes measures of public action and public policies and contains certain provisions which favor the undoubtedly undesired. They, they were very generous. They say they didn't desire this um, this effect effect of generating situations of positive discrimination and therefore of discrimination generally indirect to those persons not contemplated in its subjective scope of application, especially significant with respect to women, which contradict the principles derived from the principle of equality enshrined in Article 14 of the Spanish Constitution and are contained in this organic law for the effective equality of women and men. So the judiciary said that the proposal for self-ID and the wording of the proposal was discriminatory to women. Nothing has happened and the, the wording of the bill remains as it was when 
the judiciary was reviewing it. And uh, this was very interesting. We noticed that the judiciary did have definitions. So we were flabbergasted to find out that the text the judiciary was reviewing was not the same that the general population had read. We published that in our website, and then we were even more surprised to find out that somehow this is not relevant in our legal system. No one has cared about it, and nothing has happened either. The judiciary um, was very, very, very important in our opinion because uh, this uh, paragraph that I'm bringing here was uh, from the very, very lengthy report, over 100 pages, that was approved by the plenary of the, the, the council. There were four members that they casted a dissenting vote, and they clearly said which, by the way, I have to say that um, we had said the same, not with the same wording, but we had said the same thing on our allegations. So we were very happy to see that they coincided with, with us. I have it translated here. It says that beyond the objective stated in the report, which was supposed to be for the equality and non-discrimination, they said, these four members of the council, they said that the, the bill what it really pursues is the imposition of a new vision of the person, thereby invading other constitutionally enshrined rights, for which reason we understand that the regulation presents serious doubts as to its constitutionality, which is the worst sin, the capital sin, the deadly sin for any legal um, text is that it's, it's against Spanish constitution. That usually, or that's supposed to mean a death penalty for that bill. Usually uh, those uh, texts wouldn't go on, but it, uh, as it, it's, as you see, it went, it went on. The principles they say that, um, that uh, um, is, is against, as, as we had said in our, in our allegations, there is freedom of belief, freedom of expression and opinion, and they, in, they included the rights of parents to the moral education of their children, which uh, usually is, uh, people understand that as conservative education for children, but I think it includes, of course, feminist values for children, that is absence of stereotyping. The highest consulting body for the government, the Council of State, also was critical of the text. And this is another irregularity uh, of all mandatory reports that were required. There was one missing by the state attorney general. So the bill shouldn't have been sent to the Congress at the time that it was sent, but at a later time after the arrival of the la last report. But anyway, it went on without the, the last uh, report missing. And again, no consequences for these irregularities whatsoever. Um, it has gone on and on and on. This is something that uh, uh, we were very, very, very impressed when we saw that. And this is just, this is kind of gossip. It's not uh, a legal thing, but I think it's very telling of the, of the situation here. Because last June, uh, again, coinciding with Pride, the cabinet approved the bill to be sent to the Congress. And this is the attire that our minister, the Minister for Equalities, chose to wear on that particular day. This is a snapshot. She, she had a picture of her uh, uploaded to her Instagram so everyone could see the, the T-shirt she was wearing. And this left picture is uh, um, her with the jacket. You know, here, you, as you see, the, the, the seal. So this is on a very official occasion. And this picture was taken at the press conference after approving the trans bill, where she was um, talking to the press about how happy she was and how human rights were advanced that day in, in Spain. The thing is that Mariliendre, which is the name that uh, she has uh, written on her chest and her breast, is a slur. It is uh, um, a made up word that gay men say in relation to their female friends. 
which is a reference to those women being an unsolicited and unwelcome addition to their gay parties. Liendre, the second part of the, of the word, liendre, is knit. I hope I, I, I looked it up well, uh, uh, properly in the dictionary. That is the egg of the louse. So it is a parasite. I hope you understand my point. So by adding Mary, Mary Lindre, they make a slur specifically addressed to women. So she chose this slur from gay men to women. And this is the qualities minister the incumbent Spanish Minister for Equality in Spain, she chose to wear this at the press conference after the session of the cabinet where the trans bill was approved and then sent to the Congress for the parliamentary proceedings. Um, I think I mentioned on my last update, they deemed the parliamentary proceedings of the bill to be urgent, but there was no mention of that urgency at this press conference where she was having the Marie Lendre t-shirt. Um, so the some bills la, take like a year, a year and a half in their parliamentary proceedings, but uh, this has been done and dealt with in three months, most. They have fast-tracked every step of the procedure, ramming their way through a parliament, first in the Congress and um, very likely um, now in, in Senate. So this is the, the voting. The votes were 188 votes in favor, 150 against, and seven abstentions. One of those abstentions was Carmen Calvo, the socialist uh, MP that uh, I mentioned before. And for that abstention, she could face a fine up to 600 euros for not following the, the, party, the party line. There's another irregularity, as, as uh, I'm mentioning all the time, because, you know, Spanish constitution establishes two ordinary periods of ordinary activity, February to June and September to December. And, uh, well, I guess... Our government has requested to enable the month of January, which usually it, it's not working for them. So they will start next week with the proceedings at the Senate in order to have the uh, special period uh, on the Senate so they can uh, approve the, the bill um, as fast as they can um, by, I don't know, before before the the middle of the of the month they want it to to be to be approved first week at the most second the only good thing about all these irregularities have been that um people have begin have begun to um wake up and notice so actions statements have been made against the trans uh, the trans bill one of the important that, um, 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 things that happened was the launch of the Mothers Association. They, they, they started as eight women, desperate women. They connected via social media. And by the time they launched, there were already um, over 200, close to 300 families affected by this um, this. Lunacy. They have here, Mom, I'm trans now. They say it's a new social contagion. Uh, Amanda is a acronym of mothers of adolescents with um, ROGD, the rapid onset gender dysphoria. Here are the, the banners of our sisters, Confluencia and Feminists of Catalonia. And this purple flag that is uh, blocked by this head, but this is our flag. This is Women's Declaration International. We were represented there by our brave sisters. And it was a very, a very emotional moment. And the College of Physicians the, um, in Madrid supported the mothers in their, in their lunch. And they, they shouted, here we are, the lionesses. This uh, organization has uh, sent uh, a petition 
to the Parliament, uh, to the European Parliament. And uh, this is uh, this is I, I copy pasted this from from the page of the European Parliament. The petitioner requests that all pharmacological and or surgical intervention on, on adolescents and young people be halted, while a thorough investigation is carried out into the incidence of the phenomenon known as ROGD in the educational and health fields. Member states uh, be requested to provide information on the incidence data recorded in the respective education and health systems, and uh, this could be found can, can be found on the web page. I have the link if it's uh, of interest for you, because uh, anyone can can um, sign this petition and adhere their name uh, to that to that to that. A uh, very, very good news in Spain, even though all this is not having a much effect on the opinion of uh, parties, but uh, many, many professional societies are speaking up against self-ID. Marina Terranis uh, mentioned that uh, for the first time, the Association of Psychologists had uh, made a statement in Spain, there are many. And this is, uh, uh, I'm quoting this uh, Twitter account because they are compiling a thread. Uh, all statements that are being published are being added to a long thread. And here I have some of the names, which is the Spanish Association of uh, Pediatrics. Um, those are the, I think in English is the GP, the General Physicians. Also the Spanish Association of uh, Psychiatrists of Children and Adolescents the Bioethics Committee, the General College of Practitioners of Physicians, the Spanish Academy of Sexology and Sexual Medicine, the Observatoire of Se uh, Sexual Health, the General Council of Psychologists in Spain, these feminists uh, that are um, health professionals, also psychologists, and the uh, Spanish Society of Psychology, uh, of forensic psychologists, uh, and many, many more. So people are, are beginning, even professional bodies are beginning to speak up. Uh, sadly, as I said, this hasn't had any influence on the minds of our politicians. And aside from these uh, um, actions from civil society, that we have been working as as hard as we as we could, and uh, when the bill arrived to the to the Congress, we, along with Confluencia and many 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 other feminist organizations, we wrote to the president of the Equality Commission to and demanded to appear before the the committee. Sorry, the Qualities Committee. Uh, because it's it's a quite uh, common procedure to have um, experts, and we demanded to be to be called in order to give our opinion. But no experts were called at all. No party. There was there was a veto, and no one were many, uh, was able to uh, give their testimony. Uh, so um, we um, WDDI Spain we wrote on December 12th uh, to the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women, because we read the letter she sent to, she sent to uh, the Scottish government. Uh, so we uh, were alerting her that Spain had the same scheme. We still have to, uh, the, the email went through, it has been received. We're waiting for an official reply on our petition. And uh, there was not; uh, it wasn't a part of the of the uh, official procedure. But the the opposition party, the Conservatives, they organized um, a conference. It was uh, during the morning of December sixteenth, twenty twenty two, and uh, this um, uh, was uh, in order to um, allow. All those, all those experts that were not that I hadn't been called before the Equalities Committee, so that they, so that we would have the opportunity to express our concerns for the for the trans uh, for the trans bill, and uh, we were very very lucky to have with us Amelia Valcarcel, who is the most prominent feminist in Spain and has been like associated usually with socialist parties. So this was a very um, it was in the news this 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 event. 
Um, and the important thing that it is that it was um, live streamed from the web page of the Congress and the recording is there. Uh, the calendar of uh, the agenda you can you can uh, look for it so this is a historic document of what was said before the vote there were 15 interventions and there was this very telling silence on the side of activist newspapers for instance el diario who instead of at attacking us as they usually do they didn't say the word not a word we think that is uh, that they didn't want their readers to watch the videos and realize that we are not the rabid fascists extreme right-wing bigots uh, that they say um they say we are at the event i took the opportunity to ask the conservatives to repeal the similar regional legislation they had passed in the regions they rule and in the closure of the event the mp that oversaw the event said that they would have uh, a look at it so we'll see uh, what happens and uh, I'm finishing. We published uh, a video with Confluencia. It's on our website, on Confluencia's website, um, because we're highlighting the links of um, uh, the ideology of um, the wording of our of this bill with uh, Yoga Carta principles. It's completely in line with Yoga Carta. So the video has been shared in in social media. And um, next um, week, in today's next Monday, Confluencia will have um, um, a webinar on the, the absurdities that are already taking place in Spain because they have been um, removing breasts of minors for, for, for years and, and people do not know that those medical interventions are being carried out on minors. We also signed, Confluencia signed the LGB Alliance's letter to the UN about the behavior of the SOGI expert that has been mentioned already in this webinar, who, as we all know, is himself a signatory of Yoga Carta Plus and dismissed all feminist concerns as, as bigotry. So this is where we are at. Uh, next um, is the, the proceedings of the Senate. We're developing some actions that uh, cannot be disclosed yet. If the bill passes in the Senate, then it's done. That will be the, the end of it. Uh, there was, there's no need to go back to the House, but it will go uh, straight to be signed by the monarch and then published at the official Gazette. If there were any changes, then it would go back to the Congress, but then a debate would ensue and maybe those changes would uh, remain or maybe they would be rejected. So um, that's very, very unlikely. That's very unlikely. The, the most um, likely outcome is that it, it will go through as it is now. Conservatives have hinted that they challenge the, they, they, they're going to challenge the law if it's approved. They did that with the regional law in Catalonia. Uh, on violence against women because the Catalonians had included transgender women, which is males, as victims of violence. We'll see what happens. And uh, that also is not um, a, a, a straight uh, um, action because uh, if, some, if, if, we challenge, if they challenge the law before the Constitutional Court, that is not a guarantee that it won't be applied. It's not an automatic process. The claimant must expressly request the blocking of the law until the court rules. And the fact that the blocking is requested is not a guarantee that it will be granted. That's a decision for the court to make. They can grant the blocking or not. So even if the conservatives challenge the law, once, once it is passed, we don't have any guarantee that it won't start to be applied. So we still have a lot of uncertainty before, before us. It is worth mentioning that recently they're having changes at the Constitutional Court, uh, appointing new um, judges, new members. And now it has a progressive majority that is supposed to be in tune with, with our government. So um, also not a very good look on that, on that side. We're not quitting the fight. We are going to go on. We don't fear what's next, even though it's quite complicated. We have uh, the president of the Francoist dictatorship. We make jokes about this, about going underground like the like the democratic people were in in, in during the dictatorship uh, dictatorship times but uh, who knows who knows what will happen we think uh, this is not the end of it whatever it happens and 
I will update you with anything that might come up in the following months. Thank you very much.